Yo, what is going on everybody? This is Mystical, and I got this comment on my YouTube the other day about how to avoid crowd control as a mystery room monk. And that's a pretty fitting uh, video that I can make because I personally used to struggle with avoiding crowd control, when to and how to, and I'm sure many others are struggling too. So I am happy to give you this video on how to avoid crowd control as a mystery room monk. So I kind of want to just jump into it. Let's talk about the tools that we have to avoid crowd control or stop crowd control. And I'm going to start with explaining it and then I actually have a game that I'm going to talk through what I did and um, how I avoided crowd control or even if I didn't avoid it, what I did to help my teammates even though I was in crowd control. So hopefully uh, that's useful. That'll be in the second part of this video. But let's talk about what tools we have to avoid crowd control. Um, I'm just going to go straight through the line. We have cheat torpedo or roll. So cheat torpedo or roll helps you avoid it. You can roll towards a pillar. Go from pillar to pillar. I'm going to use the classic example of a mage because there really isn't much crowd control that's more annoying than polymorph, honestly. So if a mage is casting polymorph, right, let's try and get these markers up. Let's say he's casting polymorph right here. And uh, I got I, I have roll and he's casting polymorph. All you have to do, um, if he's over here, he's trying to blink over here, all you have to do is roll this way. You got this giant pillar in front of you and you should be, you should be fine. Uh, sometimes you're not sometimes you just got to hook around this this pillar like just a little bit half an inch and you can avoid that polymorph It depends on if they have that second blink though. Um, if the mage is standing right here and You they blink this way and you're right around this pillar They could still double blink to here and polymorph you so that's why you should just do your best to like just completely face away from the mage now that's good and bad if they use double blink because then it's going to be really hard for them to get a follow-up polymorph because the mage has no blinks and most likely your teammates have kicks. And I, let me just start off by saying, um, this is from a 3v3 point of view, um, it's a 3v3 match, you know, you are a healer, you're one third of that team, but there's also two thirds that can help you avoid crowd control. Um, it's not just on you to avoid it. You can avoid most of it by yourself, um, that is, you know usually what monks are able to do um but you still have two other teammates uh they should be kicking crowd control as much as they can especially versus mages especially in crucial times now there will be times where they need to kick damage if a mage is about to cast greater pyro you want them to kick that um but if the, the mage isn't and you have a stun from the mage for that greater pyro they should be kicking polymorph or any crowd control like fear instead of chaos and stuff like that so i just want to tell you guys that um now let's say you don't let's say you just cheat torpedo over here you cheat torpedo i don't know you land a crowd controlled leg sweep or something and the mage is right here and you're stuck right here no rolls or anything uh you just port that's that's normally the thing um port and then just keep trying to line any mages or um any follow-up crowd control just avoid as much as you can um, so that's roll, and I think I got a little bit of ahead of myself there. That was also transcendence. Uh, transcendence, especially versus teams that really can't swap to you, um, like Mage Destro. I mean, they can, but they won't most of the time. Or you know, other te even like Windwalker DK, but they don't have castable crowd control. Anything castable, usually casters can't go you right. So uh, porting is fine to avoid crowd control. So usually do it towards the end of the cast, and you should be good. All right, so we do cheat torpedo. Let's see, what else do we got? Leg sweep, sure, leg sweep, you can use it, and paralysis. So let's say your team actually, mm, let's say your team just made a mistake. They just used both their kicks on the mage to stop a greater pyro blast, and they also don't have stuns somehow. And the mage, basically the mage is casting polymorph on you. What you can do is you can in-cap it. So I don't know if I have a dummy out. Um, toy box, let's see, dummy. I don't know if I have it oh turn up for sure i have um if the mage is right here and casting polymorph on you you just in cap them you just in cap it off um the polymorph you can also use leg sweep so most sometimes when fire mages um don't have the setup from their rogue to get you in a polymorph uh, they will db sheep you a dragon's breath into a sheep uh, but sometimes that will break depending on what essences they're running. So if they DB you and you're disoriented, you know, you're disoriented, you can still get the leg sweep off if it ends uh, to, if it breaks. Or you can in-cap it off or, or in-cap the mage to stop it. That will give you enough time. Maybe roll is coming off cooldown and you can roll away. Because as soon as that happens, like let's say you um, you stop the polymorph with your ring of peace. I mean with your um, 
ink cap or leg sweep and they're still going for it maybe you have enough time to port away or maybe you just got a roll back up and you can roll uh, LOS uh, anything to buy you time to to avoid the crowd control is the uh, great um, now avoiding crowd control also comes down to uh, positioning but I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit I'm just gonna talk about other CC's um, paralysis is good oh um, I think I mentioned it a little bit but ring of peace also really good um, Ring of Peace, you should you should be using this macro. I think it's one of the best macros that you can have as a monk. It's right here. It's a at cursor macro for Ring of Peace. Um, they're all in the description, all these macros. It's in a paste bin. And what this does is it automatically places Ring of Peace on the ground so you don't have to place it and then click it. It just clicks automatically depending on where your mouse is. So if the mage is right here casting Polymorph, boom, Ring of Peace interrupts it. This can backfire on you if the mage blinks right before you Ring of Peace, but... Most of the time, you should be good by just ring a piecing the polymorph cast. Um, so those are pretty much all your abilities. You use roll to avoid. You know, if you're like stuck in between here, um, you roll away LOS. You can use your port to port away to avoid crowd control on you. You can use paralysis or leg sweep to interrupt or, or ring a piece to interrupt the cast. Um, obviously you need to be stacking on them to leg sweep, but ink cap has a pretty good range, 20 yard range. It's okay. So if they're pretty close to you, you can do that. Um, and that's pretty much all your abilities that you have to interrupt or stop or avoid it. Um, one little niche thing is if you're playing crane, so let's say you're playing crane and they're off, you're off the yard or something. And they, um, the team, it has a bunch of slows, like it's a frost mage or something. Uh, what they'll try to do is they'll try and polymorph you off this off once your crane ends so especially if they DR you but the last two seconds you roll away and you get uh, avoid any crowd control uh, the reason you do this is because where the crane uh, for those of you who don't know makes you immune to snares roots and slows so as you're rolling away in crane they can't slow you at all like it, no slow or root will stop you so you can roll away with the last usually a second and a half two seconds of way the crane if you don't have rising sun kick and um, reposition, which brings me into a very important topic. Um, the hardest part of being a misweaver is positioning. You can avoid a lot of crowd control by just being positioned correctly, not just you, but your teammates. So what you can do, um, especially on, on maps like this with pillars is just stay by the pillar. That's, that's the best thing you can do. And if your teammates, like you want your teammates to be right out here, let's say you're playing, I don't know, death Knight, uh, demon hunter. And the mage is right there. You want your teammates to be out there in the middle. Sure, you can still get interrupted. It'll happen. It's fine. Um, but you can also avoid so much crowd control. The mage will have to waste blinks to get to you. If you're playing against the Holy Pally, and the Holy Pally is like way over here. Let me see. We got purple, pink. No. All right. Let's say the Holy Pally is like way over here, and you're right here behind this pillar. This Pally is going to have to travel so far. And you can make him work for it too. You can... If you see the pally coming in on this side of the pillar, you can roll to this pillar, and all of a sudden he wastes his horse and uh, to to get to you. And then if if the pally's still coming, like let's say the pally went to that pillar, and now the pally is, oh, oh, and let's say the pally is um right here now, you can actually just port away as soon as he gets to you because these pillars have a um you can port between these pillars, so you can avoid so much crowd control even if it's not castable. Um, the pally eventually will probably get the hodge, but you really want to make people work for it. You want them to commit cooldowns to try to get to you, like horse, for example. All of a sudden, the pally has no more mobility, and you can swap to him. You probably won't do that. You'd probably stay mage, but that's just a hypothetical. In twos, you could probably swap to the pally if he has no mobility. You know, so you really want people to work for it. If the mage, it, the mage will probably get a polymorph in the game, um, but if you can avoid polymorphs as long as you can to try and get some cooldowns back. Let's say you don't have Cocoon for like 10 seconds, but they you're off poly DR. You want to avoid as, you want to just create as much time and distance between the mage so you can get that uh, life cocoon back so you can use it before the polymorph and stuff. So again, uh, positioning is important. Use the pillars to your benefit. Um, it is hard on Dalaran sewers or, no, Dalaran series you should be okay. It's Ruins of Lord Run that's kind of hard because it's not much. You can use some of the gravestones. Pretend this is a gravestone. You can like, keep dipping in and out, but that puts you too far, too close to the fight for interrupts. So 
that's um that's positioning and let's talk about what you can do if you actually do get crowd controlled so we talked about what you can use to interrupt or stop crowd control we talked about positioning now what happens if you, you're going to get crowd control you just know it uh, the big as a misweaver the biggest thing you can do is life cocoon that's the biggest thing that's pretty much the only thing you can do um you could also pre uh, PV trinket, for example. Um, if you have PV trinkets like I do, I have Ward of Involvement and I have Revitalizing Voodoo Totem. This is from the first boss in BOD. This is from the uh, Atal Dazar. I got did a plus ten for it. But let's say you're gonna get polyed. Um, your 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 DPS are stuck in a Ring of Frost. You have no mobility. You have no port. No nothing. You're gonna get crowd controlled. Um, can't port or anything. No rolls or anything. Uh, the best thing you can do as a monk is life cocoon the teammate that the enemy team is focusing or pre pve trinket and what does that mean pretty much right before you get polyed feared blinded obviously you don't know if you're gonna get blinded but you know I, that's probably for a separate video uh polyed feared i don't know hodged repentanced cloned anything like that any crowd control use life cocoon on whoever's taking damage use water of envelopment on whoever, whoever's taking damage use your any trinket you have to put on your teammates to lessen the damage you're taking you can also revival but pretty much you're going to want to be life cocoon and why well trinket is probably your biggest cooldown for a monk it, it's it's huge it, it prevents people from swapping to you they'll still try to try but if you have trinket and safeguard they shouldn't kill you and if somehow later in the game they find crowd control on you it's pretty easy to get a kill on a teammate if you don't have life cocoon so right before you get polyed life cocoon that's pretty much how i do it that's pretty much the best way to hold on to your trinket because it's so important as a misweaver monk and that's pretty much all i do uh again avoiding crowd control isn't just on you it is also on your teammates but you can avoid and stop a good amount use your mobility to your advantage use your ports use your rolls as much as you can to avoid crowd control make the other team work for it make them work for it make the make the mage use db on you into a poly instead of on your teammates use the pally use horse to get to you and then keep avoiding the hodges just make them work for it and if your position's right you can avoid a lot of it you do not want to be stuck in the middle of the map especially versus rmp if you're stuck here if you push in right here and you get polyed you're done. <laughs> You're going to get triple polyed into probably a kidney shot, into probably a repentance or hodge fear. If you're if it's a priest, you're going to be stuck there. But if you position correctly by a pillar, you should be okay. Now, I know this is a lot, but I do have a game. I'm just going to click through it for you guys to show you what I did to avoid crowd control. Hopefully, it's, it, it really solidifies what I'm talking about. And let's jump right into that video. All right, everybody, so this is from my stream. It is Disc Priest Frost Mage, a little bit different than Fire Mage, but not much different. I'm just going to run through this match and show you guys how I prevented, avoided, or actually this, this match actually has every single example that I explained to you guys. So hopefully we can we just skim right through this. So you can see the mage is coming. Uh, the mage should be blinking in pretty soon. So the mage, the mage is pushing in here. Just use Comet Storm. Uh, obviously, by the way, my warrior is not going to go the Frost Mage, by the way. Um, it, it, he will not. He's never going to kill Frost Mage in my, my warrior's arms. There's just no way. Uh, so the Mage has free reign over this this whole game to Polymorph me, and we're going to be going the Disc Priest. So the Mage, as you see, is pushing in right now. Let's see if I can just scrub right by. Yep, here it is. He's going to do it. He's going to try to Polymorph me, and I ink cap him instantly. Uh, to avoid him trying to cast Polymorph and me missing. And then right before the, the paralysis ends, you can see, I stun him just to avoid it. Uh, my warrior does get a banner down. We were using voice. So my warrior did put a banner down and we get the, we get feared here, which is okay because it's only half. And then you can see the mage pushing in. The mage, is their setup is going to be trying to Polymorph me into um, using Icy Veins. They're going to use Icy Veins if I'm Polymorphed. So... Uh, they need CC first. So the mage right here, you can see I need to heal uh, my warrior. And we're on the same side as the mage. So what do I do? Um, I try to avoid it, but he roots me. And my warrior fears him. So I don't get polyed. So you can see how it's not just me trying to avoid crowd control. My teammate is also trying to help me as much as, as, much as he can. 
even though he's an anonymous warrior. Um, so he gets the fear. However, um, the mage trinkets, and that's not something I predicted. So I roll away. Unfortunately, I get um, I, I get stopped by this wall. I can't roll through walls, and the mage had to double blink to get that polymorph. Um, so that's okay. So that's that polymorph. Um, you could see that example where. Uh, the mage uses double blink. I, I got stuck on the wall there with my roll. It was kind of unfortunate. I think I used ring of peace too. Oh, I used ring of peace earlier on the priest to I think interrupt him. So we're gonna get triple. See, this is the problem. And imagine if there was a rogue on it in threes. It, it, you get so much crowd control. Or you get you get put into a lot of crowd control. So we get triple polyed here, and now we're off DR. Uh, the mage potentially has blinks. Yes. Yeah, so obviously I just cocoon and then start healing with Ori mastery or yeah with Ori mastery. And we're top. So now let's go to the next time the mage tries to poly me. Where is he? I shouldn't be off DR here. So you can see um, this this map doesn't have a lot of pillars. They do have the rooms, but it's kind of awkward because my warrior really can't help that much. So it, it really is just me versus the mage when it comes to crowd control. So I try to take uh, the pillar stance. Uh, this huge pillar, it's really hard for the mage to get crowd control. And that's what I do. I just stay by the pillar, place port up here. And now you can see the mage blink CSs me, which is unfortunate. But, and what they'll try to do is they'll try to CS you, root you, because then you can't dispel and then poly you. But one thing you can do as a, as a Mistweaver Monk, and probably Windwalker, but you won't be kicked that often. If you get kicked, you can incab. So we get kicked instantly here by the blink CS, which we should have juked. And we incap him. So he can't get the root on us to poly us. So we incap him and completely avoid it. And now we're on this side. We're on the opposite side of the pillar. This is this is what I was trying to print out. Make the mage work for it. You make him use his blinks to get those polys on you to lessen their mobility. And there's no CS, so we can just free cast here. You see this guy's trying to get a sneaky polymorph on me by trying to go here. Polymorph from here to here instead of coming around this pillar. And you can see the mage push up again, and I roll away LOS using this um, this uh, Z axis right here, this step. He can't polymorph me some LOS. And I believe the mage tries to go for a poly here. You can see they're both stacked up. The mage obviously wants to get a poly on me. Hasn't used Icy Veins yet, but this is probably going to be Icy Veins. And you can see the mage keeps trying to push in, so we're just going to keep going. And here's the polymorph right here. He blinks, tries to polymorph me, and what do I do? There's two options I can do here. Uh, that I could have done, but I don't know. I could have ported to right here, but I don't know if that's an LOS. That actually could have been an LOS, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think it goes, yeah, there's like half an inch where I'm actually uh, in LOS, in his line. Or you can roll away and try to get to behind here because we just saw the mage used one blink to get to us. So there is, there's a second blink, but there isn't a third. So if we can get behind this, this, um, you know, this ledge right here, we can we can avoid this poly. So we roll. Actually, here, let me just play a few. We roll, completely avoid that poly, because we we went LOS. Replace it. Our um, we put our hots on our on our boy, and there's the second blink. You could see here's that situation I was talking about, where I try to ring the poly. I I I missed it by like so such a short. I ring a piece. And he blinked at the same time. So that's that situation where it's going to happen. Trust me, it, it really does happen. Uh, it's unfortunate when it does. Thankfully, there aren't a lot of... There aren't melee on this team. So they they can't swap to me now that I don't have a uh, Ring of Frost. <laughs> but yeah, it just happens. It happens. Now this guy is probably going to fear... This is the problem, obviously, when I was talking about him going in the middle of the map. You're going to get triple poly into a fear. Um, this you can see here finally is the icy veins from the mage. So I I trinket the fear and cocoon because this is dark arc icy veins. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Um, and I just try to help damage the priest just because we we got him on the ropes here, right? We're doing a ton of damage, a lot of pressure. Um, yeah. So I'm off polydr probably not for long. There's just an in cap uh, to be annoying really and to stop any um, polys. And there's the blink. I don't know what happened there. I'm not going to lie. Oh, you know what? I thought I had in cap. And uh, this poly was basically free. This was... The, I Completely my bad. I shouldn't have gotten polyed here. Uh, because I could have ported it, right? My port is somewhere, I think, on the side of the pillar. Should have been able to just port that. And uh, I think there's one more poly in this game. Yeah, we're, we're killing... We're trying to juke the mage here. 
juke the mage there. Great. So now they have no interrupts. They have nothing. The priest is pushing in for fear, but obviously he's not gonna he's not gonna get us with the warrior sitting on him. There's our port right there. Always make note where your port is. My port was right there. I could have ported that poly. You can see I'm trying to stay as close to the pillar as possible because the mage doesn't have a lot of setup from the priest. So it, it, he just has to cast them. Has to be a hard cast. Um, so here comes another poly. I could have ported it. Um, but instead, I just cocoon it um, because I don't have trinket. So if he actually does get this poly somehow, it's probably close to game over because we have no trinket and he can get the triple poly into a fear so this is that example i was talking about if i see that the poly is going to happen you can see i have a roll and i maybe could have gotten to this room but this poly is so close um i don't think it was it was going to happen so what do i do i just life cocoon just life cocoon it uh, i could have tried to ring a piece as well but that's okay probably should have to be honest but i didn't and then we should get the kill. There's waiting for the waiting to get feared. Got feared here. They overlapped with Polly and Fear. And then uh, I mean that's pretty much. I think that's the last Polly. That's in cap. And I think we just crushed this priest here with the full leg sweep. So you can see in threes it's a little more hectic. I like doing twos a lot. So this twos is from an example. But obviously there's examples of threes. Um, do your best to just avoid. Your crowd control with your ring of pieces, in caps, transcendence. Um, you also have leg sweep. Um, you have a lot of options to stop it, to avoid it. Help, use your teammates to help you. In threes, you're going to have a lot more help than twos, right? It's only one kick, and especially with an arms warrior. Uh, you have Stormbolt and kick, but that's pretty much it. And you're using that on the priest or the healer, probably, if you're focusing on the healer. But as a monk, you can, you can definitely avoid a lot of it. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions at all... Feel free to let me know. Uh, I still struggle a little bit with avoiding crowd control, but I am a little bit better. I know some people struggle. If you have any questions, I'm happy to help. This is really important as a mystery monk because healing as a monk is relatively easy. It's the positioning and avoiding the crowd control as much as you can as a monk. That is very, very hard and difficult. It takes a lot of getting used to compared to other healers. And that's pretty much it. Again, any questions, please let me know. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend. I'll see you all later. I'll be streaming later. I appreciate you. Thank you so much.